Demonstration Nugget, AWS Elastic Block Store, or EBS. Hey everyone, Ben Finkel here, and if you've wondered what it means to be EBS backed when you create a new EC2 instance, well, we're going to learn all about it. EBS refers to Elastic Block Store, a really neat way to store your virtual hard drives inside of AWS. We'll talk about the features and pricing of EBS, and then we'll finish by going through a quick demonstration of how you can work with EBS volumes and snapshots inside of the management console. It'd be understandable if you hadn't noticed or seen AWS Elastic Block Store, EBS, when you've been browsing around inside of the AWS console. It doesn't have a main menu option for it. It doesn't have a configuration button, at least not visibly noticeable right off the bat. And that's because EBS is really a backup or a storage mechanism that is tied closely to EC2. Your EC2 instances connect to volumes or virtual hard drives that are created inside of and stored on Elastic Block Store. So I like to consider EBS as just virtual hard drives in the cloud. You might be familiar with .vhd files. Those are um, virtual hard disk files that are used in software like VMware or Oracle VirtualBox. Well, this is just kind of like creating VHD files and storing them up inside of a fully managed platform. So in order to create these volumes, you can actually do so during EC2 creation. So while you're spinning up a new EC2 instance, I'll show that off momentarily. Or you can set them up independently. You can create them outside of EC2 and then connect them to either a running or a new EC2 instance. You can create VHDs that are based on either SSD or magnetic drives. And your sizes can be anywhere from 1 gigabyte to 16 terabytes in size or 1 gigabyte to 1 terabyte for magnetic drives. So your SSD options are actually a lot larger than your magnetic drives. One of the cool things that you can do with EBS volumes is you can take a snapshot of what at any time and store it in S3, simple storage service. What that'll do is that'll take a point in time backup of your virtual hard drive and move it over to cheap storage inside of S3 so that you have a good point in time backup of your drives. And EBS are used for all sorts of things on your EC2 instances. They're used for your root volumes. They're used for volumes that are going to have databases or application data. Essentially, anything that you want to persist, you're going to have in Elastic Block Store. Pricing for these EBS volumes is relatively straightforward. You are going to pay for what you provision. This is a big difference from S3. Whereas in S3, you pay for what you use. In Elastic Block Store, you have to pay for what you provision. So if you create a... I don't know, a two terabyte virtual hard drive, you're gonna pay for two terabytes of usage, even if you're only storing initially, you know, a couple of gigabytes of data on that drive. So once you've provisioned or once you've carved out that space for that um, that drive, you're gonna pay for what you've provisioned. And you have to pay not only for storage that you provision, but in some cases for specific types of hard drives, you will have to provision IOPS as well, input and output operations per second. So you'll pay in advance for a specific number of IOPS and then regardless of whether or not you hit that maximum number of operations in a second, you are going to pay for the entire IOPS that you've provisioned. And this is important to know, your pricing is going to be both region specific and type specific. So down here I've, um, I've pulled up the, the pricing for the US West region and you can see that this is the list of all the different types that are available inside of the US West region and how much it's going to cost you. So before I show you what it looks like in the interface real quick, let's just go briefly over the differences between EBS and S3. They're often confused by new users to AWS, but they're very different products. So EBS is what we call block storage file system based storage, whereas S3 is an object store. In EBS, you are creating these virtual hard drives and they're used for block storage, which is effectively the kind of storage that operating systems use to read and write to hard drives, whereas S3 is a publicly available object store. You store individual objects up inside of S3. EBS is redundant within a given availability zone, so you pick a region and availability zone and your drives are redundant across that zone, whereas S3 has region-wide redundancy. EBS is not internet accessible while AWS S3 is, although note I have an asterisk there and that's because you could theoretically create your own, I don't know, FTP server on your server that had a connection to an EBS volume and then you could expose that FTP server to the internet. I'm just spitballing here, but that would allow you to get internet access to that drive ultimately, but you would be the one in control of all the security and maintaining the access and the read and writes to that drive through your EC2 instance. You would have to set up and support the software to do that. So ultimately, what is it? Well, EBS is a disk drive, whereas S3 is cloud-based file storage. You can think of EBS as being block storage, where you store and put together these individual blocks of hard drives, whereas S3 is a bucket with objects and you get to upload and download those objects out of S3. Now let's take a look at the interface. 
So I'm connected to the AWS management console here and notice like I mentioned you're not going to see EBS anywhere on the screen. Down here uh, is my storage and content delivery and I've got all the different storage options for AWS but I don't see EBS and that's because it's buried underneath EC2. You should recognize this if you followed along our demonstration on the EC2 management console. And if I launch my EC2 browser, uh, to begin with, I've got one running instance right here. If I select instances, I can see that I do actually have an instance up and running. And I'm just going to bring up the description page down here. One of the things that we set up with our instances is we set up its root device type. The root device type tells us whether or not this instance has its storage inside of instance store, which means a disk that's attached to the host machine running this instance, or if it has its storage in something called EBS, Elastic Block Store. And in that case, that's the more, more common type. We actually do, in fact, have our root device type for this instance. I set it up as EBS. I chose an EBS-backed image when I built this. And if I scroll down on the left-hand navigation panel here, you can see there's an option for Elastic Block Store with volumes and snapshots. If I choose volumes, there is my volume. This is the root device volume or the root volume for that instance that we saw that I already had created inside of my dashboard. And you can view all the different um, uh, description items about it here. But essentially, it's pretty straightforward. This is a type GP2. It is in US West 2B, the availability zone US West 2B. It's 8 gigabytes in size and it is currently in use. So because this is attached to my EC2 instance, if I right click and terminate this instance, what's going to happen is that that drive is going to get deleted. It is going to delete that volume. So if I come down here to volumes, yeah, it's still going to see it. So once that uh, EC2 instance finishes terminating, this should disappear and we may just have to wait a few minutes for that to happen. I suppose while we're waiting we can show off the create volume option here inside of the Elastic Block Store interface. So completely separate from creating or setting up any EC2 instance, I can just create a volume here. I can choose my different type. I'll choose GP2. Uh, let's make it 50 gigabytes in size. My availability zone US West 2A is fine. And I can choose to encrypt the volume at rest if I want. I don't need to do that, so I'll simply click create. Very, very simple. Oh, look, my old drive already went away. So now I've got this new 50 gigabyte volume being created. This volume is just being created out in the ether, though. It's out in, in the cloud. <laughs> there I go, saying the cloud again. So what happens is it's not accessible anywhere or by anything until I attach it to an EC2 instance. So let's come here. There's my old one that I just terminated. Let's launch a new EC2 instance. Let's select the um, Amazon Linux AMI. That's fine. A T2 Micro is fine. I'll skip past this. I'll click to the Add Storage option, step number four on creating an EC2 instance. And again, we covered all of these steps in our demo on the EC2 management console in a different nugget. But here you see I'm going to create my root volume. I can select Add New Volume and choose what type it's going to be. EBS is my only option. But what this will allow me to do is allow me to create a new volume in line while I am building my um, while I'm building my instance here. So I can say delete on termination. I'm going to leave it unchecked. And we'll say review and launch. So this will launch my instance. It's giving me some warnings that it is not going to uh, not going to be in the free tier because of the configuration options I've chosen. So that's all right. It's going to cost me some money. I'll just make sure to delete it when we're done here. So I come back to my instances tab and I can see the old terminated one. There's my new running uh, instance here. And if I scroll down to Elastic Block Store and select my volumes, well, now I've got three volumes. So I've got this 50 gigabyte drive that I created a moment ago, independent of any, any EC2 instance. It's still not accessible. I've got the 8 gigabyte root volume that we created when we started up this instance. And I've got that 24 gigabyte volume that I also created additionally. Uh, it was mounted as SDB, I believe. So this 50 gigabyte volume, we can attach to that instance. All we have to do is right click and say attach volume. And now we would key in our instance, uh, our instance ID. It found it for me, so I can just select it from the pull down. And it's going to connect it as SDF, which is fine with me. That's just a, a recommendation it made. I'll click Attach. And now that volume has another drive mounted in it. And I could access that drive directly from that EC2 instance. Of course, the advantage here is that if I have to bring down or tear down that instance for any reason, this drive and also the 24 gigabyte drive are going to remain afterwards. I can attach them to a new instance and persist whatever data I've stored on them through to that connection or that instance. In fact, if we come over here and terminate this instance, which I'd like to do because I don't want to keep paying for it, instance state, terminate, yes, I will terminate that. The root volume is going to be uh, deleted. I left that as delete on terminate. 
But when we come down to our other volumes, we'll see that even after the instance is gone, even after this instance finishes terminating, these other volumes, the 24 gigabyte and the 50 gigabyte volume, will remain inside of EBS. And there we have it. So the root drive is gone, but the two other drives are in a state of available. So they're not currently in use with any EC2 instance because all my instances are shut down. And I can always, if I want, create a snapshot of any of these drives. Simply right click, select Create Snapshot, give it a name. Uh, we'll call it Ben's First Snap. Nah, better be, uh, better be all one word. Ben's first snap. Click create, and it created that snapshot down here in my snapshot section. So there it is, first snapshot. From the snapshot, I can do some cool stuff. At any point in time, I can delete it, of course, create a new volume from it if I want to attach to a new EC2 instance or even an existing EC2 instance, or I can even create an image from it. So if this happened to be a root volume and it has the operating system configured and installed, I can create a new image from it and then I can spin up new EC2 instances based on that image. So EBS snapshots and volumes are really, really powerful, flexible tools, even if they are sort of wrapped up inside of the EC2 dashboard. So that concludes this nugget on AWS Elastic Block Store, EBS. Just to recap, EBS represents virtual hard drives in the cloud, volumes that you and I create when we spin up our new EC2 instances, or even independently of EC2 instances that we can later connect to those instances. Those volumes can be managed independently of the instance that they are connected to, including we can keep them even after the EC2 instance is deleted, we can create snapshots to back them up, and from those snapshots we can restore to new images or new volumes. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.